बिस्मिल्लाम व्यूअर्स मैं आज एक सेशन करने जा रही हूँ यहाँ हमारी मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी के अंदर एक स्पीच एंड लैंग्वेज पैथोलॉजिस्ट हैं उनके साथ वाई आई अरेंज दिस सेशन बिकॉज जब मैंने इंस्टाग्राम uh, पे अपने कुछ पोस्ट uh, अपने चैनल के बारे में पोस्ट uh, की तो मुझे बहुत सारे पेरेंट्स के कमेंट्स में और मैसेजेस में ये क्वेश्चंस आए कि उनके बच्चे उनका बच्चा अभी बोलता नहीं है कोई टू इयर्स है कोई थ्री इयर्स ओल्ड है तो वो क्या करें तो एंड आई एम नॉट अ स्पीच पैथोलॉजिस्ट तो इस इन सवालों के जवाब मैं खुद नहीं दे सकती थी लेकिन मेरी कम्यूनिटी में uh, मेरे मिलने वालों में एक बच्ची हैं जिन्होंने मुझे ये कहा था कि अपना नाम नहीं uh, एक्सपोज करना चाहती सोशल मीडिया पे बट शी इज़ वेरी काइंड एंड नाइस जब मैंने उनसे ये बात की कि अगर आप मेरे थोड़ा सा हेल्प करो एंड वी विल रिकॉर्ड अ जूम मीटिंग जिसमें हम पेरेंट्स के उन सवालों को एड्रेस uh, कर सकें तो बेस्ड ऑन दोज मल्टीपल कमेंट्स और मैसेजेस दैट आई रिसीव मैंने कुछ क्वेश्चन फार्मूलेट uh, किए थे जिनको के uh, मैंने अपनी सिस्टर से के सामने रखा और उन्होंने उनको बहुत बेहतर आंसर देने की कोशिश की है लेकिन चूंकि उनकी लैंग्वेज उर्दू नहीं है हर नेटिव लैंग्वेज इज़ नॉट उर्दू तो वो सारा इंटरव्यू जो है वो इंग्लिश में है इस रिकॉर्डिंग के बाद आप इसको देखें जिन लोगों को इंग्लिश समझ आती है दैट्स वेल एंड गुड वो तो मैसेज को समझ जाएंगे बट फॉर दोज जिनको इंग्लिश uh, की ना समझ आती हो मैं इस पूरी रिकॉर्डिंग के एंड पे उनके लिए अलहदा से लाइक आई विल सम अप के उन्होंने क्या कहा है अपने uh, गुफ्तु में कि किस तरह स्पीच uh, और लैंग्वेज जो है वो डेवलप होती हैं क्या चीज़ें हिंडर करती हैं और पेरेंट्स क्या कर सकते हैं सो लेस वॉच फर्स्ट हर इंटरव्यू विद मी Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. How are you, sister? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Right. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good too. And uh, you know why we are together? You know we are, and um, you know like doing some question answer for my viewers in Pakistan, uh, related to speech um, delays or speech um, problems in in children. So first of all, I want you to give your brief introduction for my viewers. Alright, Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I'm a speech and language pathologist. Um, I didn't graduate too long ago, so I haven't been practicing for very long. But I am working in a school, so I provide speech and language services to students. who have special needs um and have been deemed qualified to receive speech and language services based on a certain disability classification um so usually that means that the students are struggling with the academic curriculum with academic and social development um and so my intervention and assessment is tied with the student ac uh, succeeding academically and also for them to feel empowered and independent in their school and home environments thank you so much so let's jump into our questions i actually formulated uh, questions uh, based on the parents you know like uh, comments on my uh, posts so my first question is what would do you like to um, describe a little bit about the language milestones like what age children start talking and sure um so usually when we talk about milestones for speech and language we're talking about speech and language so there's a little bit of a differentiation mm -hmm. um usually when we're talking about speech we're talking about speech output specifically all of the sounds that i'm saying right now and the ability to produce those specific sounds um so there are standards for when specific sounds in a language should be developed sounds as small as p or b or t or d um and then there are there's language development 
um, in comprehension and um, expression. So we are thinking about form, the form of language that has to do with phonology, that has to do with, um, again, sounds, but specifically what the sounds mean. So to be able to recognize, for example, even if, if somebody is changing a sound in their articulation, if we're talking about speech, for example, it's a common error I'll see in my students where they'll substitute the sound as in fish or the sound as in thin, for example. So if I were pointing to a picture um, and I say that, oh, this, look at this man, he looks very thin in, in this picture. They're gonna recognize, even though they might pro um, produce that sound when they are articulating their speech, they will recognize that I said something wrong because mm -hmm. they recognize that something as specific as one single sound can change the meaning of a, of a word. So that's what we're thinking about for a phonology. And also um, syllables, for example. Um, there, so for example, by age four, a student uh, or any individual should no longer be saying nana for banana. Banana is mm -hmm. three syllables, banana. And it's typical where you can have a young child who will reduce the amount of syllables and say nana. But mm -hmm. there are appropriate norms for when that's okay and when that stops being uh, developmentally appropriate. So for example, by age four, that should not that should be eliminated. Or um, the word stop, just saying top, for, for example, um, reducing that, that cluster, that st combination, that should be eliminated by age four or five. Mm -hmm. So there's information about um, when, when those errors are normal and when they no longer are normal. That's, and then there's also um, a part of language form, there's morphology, um, which has to do with a morpheme or the smallest unit of meaning. Um, so if we think about possessive S, um, if we, so mom's cake was stolen yesterday, that apostrophe S, that possessive S codes meaning we're, we're talking about possession here um and then there's also synt syntax or beyond the individual word um how you organize those words in a sentence that makes sense right. um so that's language form and there are a whole bunch of tables and charts having to do with when we should be using certain prepositions um when when we are you know using certain verb forms, mm -hmm. like we are going, for example. Um, and then there's content. So content, the content part of language often has to do with a lot with vocabulary mm -hmm. and meaning. Um, so for example, by age one to two, a child might look at an object and name it and label it. They might say book, for example. Mm -hmm. Usually it's just one or two words at a time maximum. But by age four, for example, they might say, that's a book. Um, so adding a lot more vocabulary and words and expanding um, the utterances. And also what types of concepts are they talking about mm -hmm. um, when they're using their vocabulary to talk about something existing, something not existing. They might say, all, all done, maybe at age one to two, all done. Um, but by age four, they might say, it's not in the bag. So, so something was there and it's no longer there. And that becomes, it develops and becomes more complex as um, the child ages. When do they start talking about uh, time? That's a very, um, that's a very complex concept. Mm -hmm. So yesterday and last month. Um, and then there's also language use. So pragmatics, what is the purpose what communicative function are you achieving when you talk to somebody? Are you trying to persuade them? Are you trying to inform them, give them extra de um, details? When you're talking, are you able to maintain the topic or do you suddenly switch to something else without kind of introducing the listener to that um, transition? Um, are you providing relevant details or are you, are you going off tangent? Are you able to fill the listener in if you recognize that he or she was not a part of the experience that you're thinking that you're thinking about? 
Mm-hmm. Students will start talking to me about Minecraft and use very specific terms without first checking in with me to um to ask and know whether I'm familiar with that game. Mm-hmm. Same thing when you're talking to uh, an adult or a professional in a certain area, you're not going to talk to them the same way that you would to a child. That all has to do with that all has to do with language, down from the specific sounds and the meanings of those sounds to then being able to um, use language in a very complex way to um, form relationships and to gain what what you what you need and to let your preferences and your desires be known. So the thing, the thing is, is that milestones for speech and language, whether we're talking about articulation mm-hmm. and for acquiring all those different forms of language that I mentioned, those are language specific. So, for example, um, the phonemes in Urdu, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mispronouncing Pakistan like <laughs> language name. So, right. <laughs> you, did, you said it right. <laughs> Or, you know, in um, Punjabi specifically. Um, So if there's a child like me kind of growing um, up in a home where English is the predominant language and I'm exposed to it at birth and I'm in a, let's say, predominantly English speaking country, if I can't say phonemes that um, are a part of Punjabi language, for example, that's, that's not a problem. Right. Based on my language exposure, mm-hmm. but it is a pro- problem for somebody who is spe- who grew up in a Punjabi speaking ha- household or in, in a region where Punjabi is spoken. So the kind of unfortunate thing is, I'm, I mean, you know, language is so diverse and that's so beautiful, right? And um, you know, we we can speak so many different languages based on environmental factors, but then in terms of sharing data for what um, milestones are appropriate um, at a certain age, you can't generalize that from country to country or language to language. So in the United States, in the United States and in many English speaking countries, there's a lot of research about um, all that specific information in terms of when speech sounds are developed um, uh, and when certain vocabulary is used the complexity of sense sentences when that's appropriate um, when they become more complex but we can't say the same for different languages because the structure of the language itself is different and language development start from like age one we could say from one word then proceed to two words and by the time a child is four years old <clears throat> from one to two uh, word phrases, the child must be speaking a uh, uh, yes. sentence, right? Mm-hmm. It's journey, basic journey of speaking and understanding phonemes or uh, making words or sentences. It's from basically from one to four years old, right? And then language develops as children acquire more vocabulary then parents should worry about like there is something delaying or hindering in my child's speech or language um so you have to consider language exposure first Mm -hmm. first so if a child has not received a lot a lot of language exposure Mm -hmm. say they're in an environment where they're kind of neglected and they're not spoken to and they don't have many opportunities to communicate you then can't expect Um, that if they are not producing a lot of language, then that has to do with any kind of delay or deficit that is inherent to them. Mm -hmm. Um, That that lack of language output is being primarily caused by the lack of opportunity in the environment. Let's say that the child is growing up in a um, typical um, environment where where, where there's good opportunity to communicate. Sometimes by age two, if a child is not um, speaking very often, um, if they have less than 50 to 100 words, then that can be a cause um, for concern Mm -hmm. um, for for parents. However, that child may just be a late talker and Mm -hmm. specifically that's, it seems to be more prevalent in boys than in girls. Mm -hmm. There's a higher, 
association between boys being late, late talkers. But there are indicators that that's, that that may just be a temporary um, thing. For example, if their receptive language is strong, if it seems that even though they're not um, speaking a lot, their comprehension is strong, mm -hmm. um, then that's a really good uh, indicator that um, they are understanding language and indeed co comprehension mm -hmm. so, some, sometimes um, can be more important um, than expressing verbally. Um, and then you also want to rule out that any kind of speech or speaking delay isn't caused by any kind of anatomical or structural um, difference or um, abnormality. So sometimes a, uh, a child can have a tongue tie mm -hmm. um, as it's colloquially, colloquially referred referred to so there's a small piece of muscle attached under your your tongue and if it's too short it's called the lingual frenulum then your tongue can't uh, reach certain parts of your mouth in or in order to be able to articulate sounds correctly mm -hmm. and a simple procedure like like cutting it just um, very minimally can then reduce the uh, can increase the tongue's flexibility and then increase the range of movement and with some support and guidance from a speech language pathologist to help you know guide that new flexibility then the then the individual can be producing sounds correct also um if the child has had a lot of ear infections growing up that's that's very common but that you know that then reduces um, their ability to hear sounds clearly and then to then um, have that mental representation and then produce those mm -hmm. sounds and words clearly. Um, and also more permanent hearing loss, whether it's, you know, mild or moderate or if it's very severe. Mm -hmm. Also visual Im impairments, um, craniofacial abnormalities, if they have like a cleft palate, for example. Um, their their speech, the way it sounds, and the resonance um, will be uh, different until they have surgery to re to remediate that. Um, but then sometimes, um, you know, the speech delay can actually be a speech or language disorder, and then the symptoms for that are more um, pervasive. Usually, when we talk about a speech delay, the language skills can be recovered to age appropriate standards by a certain time with a certain amount with a little bit of help um, they'll um, they'll reach age appropriate norms but if there's a disorder then there's something kind of more um, pervasive and more long term and that usually requires um, more comprehensive um, assistance um, and it usually indicates yeah that that that, that there is a brain-based disorder that is lifelong. So when you said I I can formulate my next question from this when you said it's a brain base, you know, like and earlier you said uh, like if the child has ear infections and the child is not like uh, receiving a lot of sound and cannot produce mental image, mm -hmm. uh, what is the relation between the brain development and language learning or language or speech delays? Yeah, subhanAllah, it's, it's really amazing uh, the way that our brains are really wired for language. Mm -hmm. and it's such a, um, for, for a, a lot of us, it's really like this unconscious process where we're not actively doing anything to learn language, but it mm -hmm. just seems to happen. Um, and there's definitely a strong association between um, the brain and language development and in fact even before children can become verbal and before they start speaking um, studies show that um, with certain fMRI imaging when a child is able to listen to their mother or their parent talk somebody familiar their brain starts lighting up mm -hmm. so they are processing what, what they're receiving making meaning out of it um, but also researchers really knew that there was a deep correlation between language and the brain because of um, trauma and accidents that would happen. Mm -hmm. So when somebody was in a crazy construction accident and a hole went through their skull and their 
brain that resulted in very specific deficits in their ability to communicate. Um, specific, also, when there's a stroke or when there's a hemorrhage or you know an ischemic attack, um, and there are um, specific parts of the brain that are damaged or aren't receiving blood, um, then that can result in specific kinds of sim symptoms. Suddenly, the patient is having word finding di difficulties. They're They're um, trying to talk about an experience and they can't remember the word playground or desk, even though they're thinking about it and they can kind of visualize it in their brains, but they can't um, specifically name it. Or suddenly somebody cannot comprehend or their communication is filled with jargon and a lot of nonsense words that don't make sense. And they're going on and on and on as if it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But the brain is also malleable. Um, so if um somebody receives i mean not only uh can physical damage mm -hmm. um cause effects on the brain and what you're able to produce but also environmental factors can deeply shape the way um that your brain works your brain is very plastic so with um exposure and with um, repeated stimulation and using multiple pathways for learning, visual, auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic, you can really um, form new neural neural connections, neural pathways, new connections in the brain. Um, mm -hmm. You can form uh, neural connections um, and you can exp expand your brain's capacity for learning language and applying that. All right, thank you so much. So what I understand, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, like you said, more exposure to language lightens up the brain and means like it helps brain to make more connections, right? And new pathways of learning. And that also means if the child has less exposure of uh, like a communication, talking, verbal talking, you know, some kids mm -hmm. just watch TV all day long. So they're just like receiving information, not having a talk with their parents. That affects the brain connection too. So the brain will not make that many connections, right? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not specifically sure about, um, uh, about the impact of long-term television watching or gaming on like cognitive mm -hmm. ability or language function. Mm -hmm. I think interestingly, I came across something where um, where somebody says myth is, it's a myth, you know, your your child won't become dumber if they spend six hours in front of the TV playing games. No, I actually have uh, watched uh, <laughs> some videos, you know, which made by Harvard University. They were, there's very popular on YouTube called 30 million word gap. Mm. And it says like with the kids, the parents talk to their children and the children and the parents who don't talk, they took the MRI images, like brain images, and they have seen like the uh, the connections are way more than a child who has less opportunity to you know, like um, uh, talk with their parents. Okay, so let's go... Um, I just want to add one more thing, as mm -hmm. you said earlier, that it's amazing that how we learn language, because, you know, um, we as a Muslim, uh, in Allah, Allah in Quran Pak, in Surah Rahman told us that in, he taught us, he taught humans to speak, right? Or he taught speech like Ar-Rahman, Allah al Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Allah Mahul Bayan. So this is... Uh, an ability given to human only it's not given to any other creature i mean other creatures they have their own communication system but like how human talk or convey their meanings or receive language how um, think about themselves eloquent, eloquent speech we have uh, it's just allah's yeah. you know, like one of his many many blessings that he yeah. bestowed on humans so alhamdulillah for that that we can talk and we can, you know, like understand uh, each other and convey our meanings. Yeah. So I'm going to move to my next question. Like, uh, 
so we we are recording this video for you know like people in pakistan or any other country who can understand urdu i will you know like translate our conversation into urdu for those people to, to understand or um, a message mm -hmm. so pakistan is uh, basically an underdeveloped country and many kids don't even go to school many parents have no health care system because it's paid we don't have health care system but only people who who can pay who can afford to go to the doctor they can get services the rest of the people they don't so what would you suggest the, keeping the, these parents in mind who have who are less privileged right and can't you know like um, get a speech therapy or but if they have they um think that the child is have based on the milestone that we talked earlier they are uh, you know like facing speech delays or lang language delays we we talk about that it's environmental but if there are speech delays what can parents do to help their children at home if they have no you know like access to get speech and language services um so well i think the first thing is that if you know your child as much as possible, try to spend as much time with your child as possible. Because language starts developing at such an early age, you don't want to miss those early years in terms of identifying potential um, areas of weakness. Um, so as soon as you recognize that something may be um, different um, or they're not developing as you expect, uh, whatever kind of professional you may have access to, even if that's you know, a general doctor, um, I would bring those concerns um, to a professional and um, seek whatever counsel um, they can provide. Um, and if you have if if you have access to um, uh, further assessments, then definitely try to do that at, at the earliest time possible. Um, but there's a lot that you can do in terms of language modeling. Um, so try your best to provide a language rich environment, um, provide responses directly related to the child's communicative act or directly related to their focus of attention. Um, discuss what the child is doing versus always asking them questions. Talk mm -hmm. about what they're doing, rephrase what the child is saying. Um, in a grammatically appropriate way. Mm -hmm. um, so if a child is talking about somebody named Mila, let's say Mila is, is a girl, and then um, the child says his bag, for, for example, um, or the ball is in his bag, and you can rephrase that by saying, oh, the, you're acknowledging what, what they're telling you, but you're rephrasing it in a grammatically appropriate way using the appropriate pronoun. Oh, the ball, is in Mila's bag, it's in her bag. Mm -hmm. Do you want the ball that's in her bag? So, um, you know, repeating that appropriate form, they actually, they, they can hear it and they recognize the difference. And then with time, they'll start to self correct and they'll correct themselves. Um, and also expanding what the child is saying. So if they're having kind of these reduced phrases and if they're, they see a cat walking by and they, they say, they point it out and say cat, you can say, oh, a big golden striped cat. Um, you're, you're describing that, um, that, that object or that being in a um, much more uh, descriptive way, mm -hmm. uh, in an elongated way. Um, if the child is communicating to you with gesture, um, if they have a hard time opening a bag of apples and they give it to you, um, they kind of shove it at you. Um, that is communication. Um, it's really good that they are recognizing that they need help, that they are coming to you as a source of um, trusted assistance, and they are ultimately telling you, can you open this for me? Um, so don't ignore the child when they are using gesture to communicate, but you can simultaneously provide a spoken mo model of what mm -hmm. the child is communicating. You can say, oh, you need help with this bag of apples? We can say, can you open it for me? Um, 
in some cases, the child might say it if they're becoming more comfortable with verbal language, they'll repeat it. Um, sometimes they won't. And hopefully, inshallah, with time, not only will they repeat it, but they'll say it independently. They'll, they'll um, say it at the same time that they're using gesture. And then there's also reinforcing communication. So always providing opportunities for the child or the individual to be a communicator. And don't exclude the person from an interaction, whether this is a child or um, an older individual or any in individual whose um, neurological or language capacity seems to have reduced. Don't leave them alone. Um, make them a part of a conversation. Um, provide opportunities for the person to communicate their wants and needs without you always anticipating for them. Don't um, jump to do something before they have requested it. Mm -hmm. um, you're kind of denying them the opportunity to express for themselves what they need um, and, in this, you know, and in the specific ways they want it done. Allow a good amount of time for the individual to initiate um, what they are going to say um, before you respond. So I sometimes have a difficulty with that. I am very quick to respond to my students or to kind of interrupt them. And they were really gonna add a lot more to what they were gonna say. So I'm directly cutting off that language learning and speaking opportunity. So provide time, wait literally 10 seconds, 10 to 15 mm -hmm. seconds. Um, and then praise communication attempts. Um, and also accept multiple forms of communication. We've been talking a lot about um, speaking and that is a wonderful skill to be able to orally communicate, but there are other types of communication, you know, and there are different uh, tools if they're available, like AAC alternative and augmentative communication, where a child uh, can be pointing to multiple pictures and indicating what they want. Or a lot of us have phones, mm -hmm. um, they might be type, typing out in words what they want to say. Mm -hmm. I know even personally, even though I can communicate in multiple methods and modes, I have a preference for writing versus communicating orally. So um, allow, um, allow the individuals to communicate in the way that they most feel comfortable. Um, and you have to, all of us have to expand in, in our minds, what we think is appropriate communication mm -hmm. um, and kind of try to eliminate or reduce our biases um, for what good communication is. Um, and also, you know, play with your child, um, increase social exposure, take them out as much as you can to the grocery store, let them go shopping with you. There's so much language that can be done there. Mm -hmm. um, if you have access to books, to literacy, um, to whatever magazines, newspapers, that's really important as well. Um, and if a child is going to school, try your best to be involved in their education, to collaborate with teachers. And often um, the curriculum gives you a good idea of where your child should be at at a certain age, what they're expected to know. Um, so, um, you can really get a good sense of what your child's strengths are and specifically what they need assistance with through being involved in their um, education as much as possible. Thank you so much, sister. Jazakallah khair for your time, your precious time and uh, all the information that you gave us. I hope that my viewers will benefit from them and I'll try my best to you know, like uh, translate, not everything, but your main message uh, into Urdu. So we can, you know, like help more and more people. And Jazakallah Khair, have a wonderful day ahead, my dear. Thank you, Jazakallah Khair, to you um, for organizing this and inviting me and curating the questions and being um, attentive to your listeners' needs and to their concerns. Um, and, sh and inshallah, everybody continues to watch. Um, and share mm -hmm. the information as well. And uh, what if my viewers have more questions? Would you like to join us again? <laughs> <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. This, the, 
so this was a great experience. So in, in as much as I can provide help. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. हाँ जी अब आपने अगर पूरी वीडियो देख ली है उन सिस्टर की गुफ्तु आपको समझ आ गई है तो बहुत अच्छी बात है इट वाज अ लॉन्ग कन्वर्सेशन लेकिन फॉर दोज जिनको उर्दू समझ इंग्लिश uh, समझ नहीं आती मैं उनकी गुफ्तु को ब्रीफली uh, जो है वो आपको बताती हूँ कि पहली बात उन्होंने ये की थी कि जो लैंग्वेज जब मैंने उनसे ये क्वेश्चन किया कि माइल क्या होते हैं उन्होंने काफ़ी डिटेल में इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज के हिसाब से उसको बताया लेकिन मैं उसको कुछ थोड़ा सा अपना इनपुट डाल के जो मेरा नॉलेज है लैंग्वेज डेवलपमेंट का बच्चों के बारे में वो ये है कि लैंग्वेज तकरीबन एक साल की उम्र से शुरू होती है और चार साल की उम्र तक कंप्लीट होती है लैंग्वेज लर्न करने की जो एबिलिटी है यानी और एक वर्ड से दो वर्ड की फ्रेजेस से ले बाय द टाइम बच्चा जब चार साल का है तो उसको एक कंप्लीट सेंटेंस बोलना आना चाहिए ये एक नॉर्मल माइलस्टोन है लैंग्वेज लर्निंग का अब आप देखते हैं कि अगर आपका बच्चा दो साल का है ढाई का है साढ़े तीन साल का है और वो नहीं कुछ बोल रहा तो इट मींस कि देर इज समथिंग दस कॉजिंग स्पीच डिले अच्छा अब स्पीच डिले कह लें या लैंग्वेज जहाँ पे मैं आपको थोड़ा सा ये डिस्क्राइब कर दूँ कि स्पीच एंड लैंग्वेज आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स दोनों की जो जो लैंग्वेज है लैंग्वेज ये हो सकता है कि बच्चा नॉर्मल लैंग्वेज बोल सकता हो लेकिन उसकी एनवायरनमेंट ऐसी नहीं है उसको एक्सपोजर नहीं मिल रहा बोलने का कम्यूनिकेशन का तो वो चूँकि लैंग्वेज रिसेप्टिव होती है यानी साउंड जो बच्चा सुनता है उसके इमेजेस अपने माइंड में बनाता है और फिर उन्हीं से उसके वर्ड्स बनते हैं अब अगर एक बच्चे के साथ उसकी फैमिली इन्वायरमेंट ऐसी नहीं है कि उसके साथ कोई बहुत ज़्यादा गुफ्तु कर, करता हो या इन्वॉल्व करता हो या बच्चा कई दफ़ा एक अकेला बच्चा होता है तो वो भी खेल रहा होता है खुद से तो ऐसे बच्चे की फिर जो वोकेबलरी है वो लिमिटेड होगी और उसकी लैंग्वेज डिवेलपमेंट में हिंडर करेगी लेकिन जो स्पीच है उसके लर्न करने में बिकॉज स्पीच इज ऑल्सो जो फर्स्ट चीज है बच्चा लर्न करता है वो होती है साउंड्स और वो बोलने से कहीं पहले यानी कि इवन माँ के पेट में मैंने साइंस ये में बताती है कि सेवन्थ मंथ में बच्चे की हेयरिंग माँ के पेट में डेवलप हो जाती है और बच्चा बाहर की आवाजें सुनता है उस वो जितनी ज़्यादा आवाज़ें सुनता है बातें सुनता है या जितनी उसके साथ गुफ्तु की जाती है जब वो पैदा हो जाता है बच्चा तो जैसे छोटा बच्चा गूँ गूँ करता है हंसता है आप जब भी उसके साथ इंटरेक्शन करते हैं ना उसके साथ लाड करते हैं उसके साथ खेलते हैं अभी चाहे बच्चा बोलने की एज का नहीं है दो महीने का महीने का पाँच सात जितनी भी उसकी एज है साल से पहले आपका वो इंटरेक्शन बच्चे की ब्रेन में जो कनेक्शन है उनको बना रहा होता है और जितना ज्यादा आपका इंटरेक्शन आपके बच्चे के साथ स्ट्रॉन्ग होगा उतने उसके ब्रेन के कनेक्शन ज्यादा बनेंगे जितना कम होगा उतने वो कनेक्शन कम बनेंगे और साइंस हमें ये भी बताती है जो ब्रेन डेवलपमेंट की थेरीज हैं कि अगर थ्री टू फाइव ईयर्स एक ऐसा टाइम फ्रेम है जिसमें अगर उन कनेक्शन को यूज ना किया जाए तो वो खत्म हो जाते हैं तो ये तो ताल्लुक हो गया ब्रेन का और स्पीच का एक चीज़ उन्होंने ये बात जो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट बताई कि बच्चों को अक्सर ईयर इन्फेक्शन होते हैं तो ईयर इन्फेक्शन का मतलब है कि उस बच्चे की हेयरिंग एबिलिटी जो है वो अफेक्ट हो रही है और अगर बच्चा साउंड्स को सुन नहीं सकता ठीक से तो इसका मतलब है कि वो उसके ब्रेन में उन वर्ड्स के इमेज नहीं बना सकता और फिर उसकी वर्ड्स uh, को प्रोड्यूस नहीं कर सकता इससे हमें यह भी पता चलता है कि लैंग्वेज का और स्पीच का सबसे बड़ा ताल्लुक uh, सुनने से है यानी पहले लैंग्वेज रिसेप्टिव होती है और फिर एक्सप्रेसिव होती है पहले बच्चा सुनता है साउंड्स को और फिर उनको प्रोड्यूस करता है ये uh, तो पेरेंट्स को इस बात का बहुत ख्याल रखना चाहिए क्योंकि 
ईयर इन्फेक्शन बच्चों में बहुत कॉमन होते हैं आपको जब भी सस्पेक्ट करें कि बच्चे को ईयर इन्फेक्शन है तो उसको ज़रूर डॉक्टर को दिखाएं अच्छा इसके अलावा उन्होंने जो बात की लैंग्वेज डेवलपमेंट की वो ये थी कि बच्चे को के साथ कम्युनिकेशन करें और उसको अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ दें ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा बोलने की यानी अगर बच्चा क्वाइटली भी आप आके आपको कोई काम करने को कहता है तो आप उसको यू नो के बच्चा कम्युनिकेट कर रहा है आपसे जैसे उन्होंने एग्जांपल दी कि आपको एक बैग देता है एप्पल्स का और कहता है कि ये खोल दें लेकिन वो बच्चा कहता नहीं वो आपको बैग ला के देता है और इशारे से इसका मतलब है कि वो चाहता है कि खोल आप खोल लें तो आप उसको रीफ्रेज करें कि यू वॉन्ट मी टू ओपन दिस बैग आप चाहते हैं कि मैं ये खोल दूँ आपके लिए इसी तरह अगर बच्चा जब बच्चा भी बोलना सीख रहा होता है तो वो जेंडर्स को अल्फाज को गलत बोलता है तो आप रीफ्रेज करके उसके सेंटेंस को उसी वक्त करेक्ट करें कि वो बेहतर तरीके से उसको कम्युनिकेट करें मेरा आखिरी क्वेश्चन उनसे ये था कि चूंकि हमारे मुल्क में सर्विसेज अवेलेबल नहीं हैं या लोगों के पास इतने वसाइल नहीं हैं कि वो अपने बच्चों को स्पीच की सर्विसेज दे सकें अगर उनके डिलेज हैं तो आ, क्या करें वो तो उन्होंने एक चीज़ तो ये बताई थी कि कुछ चीज़ें जैसे कि उन्होंने इसके टंग के एक मसल की बात की कि वो बच्चों के अंदर उस मसल की थोड़ी सी अगर हल्का सा प्रोसीजर हो जाए तो वो साउंड्स को प्रनाउंस करने में यानी टंग की फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी में इजाफा करते हैं तो कई दफ़ा तो एक ऐसी स्पीच डिले की ऐसी रीज़न होती है जो कि बच्चे के माउथ में होती है लाइक उसकी ज़ुबान की में भी कोई पोजीशन सही नहीं होगी क्योंकि हमारी साउंड्स जितनी हैं वो हमारे इस वोकल ट्रैक से निकलती हैं जिसके अंदर हमारी आ, हमारा मुंह हमारी ज़ुबान हमारा गला और फिर हमारे हवा जहाँ से निकलती है हमारे एयर ट्रैक ये सारी चीज़ें साउंड्स को प्रोड्यूस करने में इकट्ठा काम करती हैं तो एक तो ये है कि अगर कोई ऐसी चीज़ है बच्चे की जो कि फिज़िकल उसके मुंह के अंदर हो जो हिंडर कर रही है तो उसको किसी न किसी प्रोसीजर से ठीक कराया जा सकता है और दूसरा ये कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा आप अपने बच्चे के साथ कम्युनिकेशन की आदत डेवलप करें बच्चों से बातें करें उनको बुक्स पढ़ाएं उनको बायर वॉक पे लेके जाएं उनके साथ ग्रॉसरी शॉपिंग करने जाएं तो बहुत अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ हैं जब आप बाहर निकलते हैं तो आप अपने बच्चों को गुफ्तु में शामिल करें एक क्वेश्चन जो मैंने उनसे नहीं किया और मैं करना चाहती थी बट जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ लैक ऑफ टाइम वो ये था कि जो मैंने आपके क्वेश्चन में से परसीव किया कि एक और चीज़ जो लैंग्वेज डिले का बायस बन सकती है कि हो सकता है बच्चा ऑटिस्टिक हो जो ऑटिज़म होती है या ऑटिस्टिक बच्चे होते हैं वो भी स्पीच uh, फॉरन नहीं प्रोड्यूस करते दे uh, उनका उनके जो ब्रेन का डेवलपमेंट है वो डिफरेंट होती है उनकी uh, uh, वो बच्चे शाए होते हैं सोशल नहीं होते सो दैट्स वाई दे डोंट डेवलप स्पीच एज उनके बाकी पीयर्स जो हैं उस एज के कर रहे होते हैं तो उसके लिए फिर आपको डिफरेंट सर्विसेज की ज़रूरत होती है Uh, मेरा ख्याल है कि मुझे मैंने जितनी थोड़ी बहुत इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको देने की कोशिश की है किसी ना किसी की इससे ज़रूर हेल्प होगी अगर हुई है तो प्लीज़ मुझे कमेंट्स में बताएं अगर आप समझते हैं कि किसी और की हो सकती है तो मेरी इस वीडियो को शेयर करें अगर आपके कोई मज़ीद क्वेश्चन हो तो भी आप मेरे मुझे मैसेज कर सकते हैं एंड आई विल ट्राई कि इन किसी और वक्त मैं फिर इनको सिस्टर को ले कर और हम उन क्वेश्चन को भी एड्रेस कर सकें जजाकल्ला खैर फॉर वॉचिंग अल्लाह हाफिज़